Welcome to my beginner's guide for Red Dead Online. For any of you that are new to Red Dead Online, or perhaps struggling, or maybe you've been playing for a while and you'd like to learn possibly some new things. By the way, if there's something I don't go over in this beginner's guide video that you think would be important for players in Red Dead Online, whether they're new or veteran, feel free and leave it below in the comment section. So the first thing that I would advise anybody new to Red Dead Online to do is play Red Dead Redemption 2, the main game. Because A, it's a fantastic story, it's hours and hours of entertainment, and it also serves as a tutorial for anyone that's going to play Red Dead Online. A lot of the game mechanics introduced in Red Dead Redemption 2 cross over to Red Dead Online. So here we are at the main menu for Red Dead Online, and it's pretty simplistic. You go into free roam, or if you prefer going to a specific state, like Amberina, Lemoyne, New Hanover, New Austin, New Elizabeth, you can just come down here, and you can select which states you'd rather spawn into. If, for example, you have to go hunt elk, Maybe you want to go up to Amberino, or you want to go and pick Desert Sage. You want to go out to New Austin. And it's free, unlike the fast travel system. So you're always going to find the newest additions to the game, like the Showdown series, here in the series playlist. The newest game that has come out this week is Sport of Kings. You also have some PlayStation 4 exclusives that will soon be crossing over to Xbox One. Make it count including Last Stand, as well as the Showdown series, Showdown series Large, Gun Rush, Gun Rush Teams, Races. So if you just want to get into a race or do Gun Rush or a Showdown series or something new in the game, you can always find that down here in the series playlist. And of course, you can always jump into the Land of Opportunity story mode, as well as Posse Up, Lead the Gang, go to the store if you were interested in buying some gold. But we're going to go ahead and go into free roam. All right, now that we are in free roam, the first thing I always do is hit left on the D-pad, go to online options, and then scroll to offensive to switch me to defensive. Offensive is for players that like the PvP. However, I'm a PvE type player. I just like hunting, fishing, doing the story mode missions, as well as the free roam missions. So... One thing I like about the recent update to Reddit Online is defensive mode, which makes it a lot more difficult for PvP players to attack PvE players. They still can, but at the same time, it's a lot easier for a player like myself to roam around free roam in Reddit Online these days. So I called up my horse by hitting up on the D-pad. That's how you can always call your horse to you. And if you're like out hunting and you wander away from your horse, whether you're gathering or fishing, all you got to do is just hit up on the D-pad. Your horse will come to you no matter how far away they are, as long as there's a road nearby. And a lot of times, if you want your horse to simply follow you and you're just out here running around, the horse will stay right there unless you quickly press up on the D-pad, signaling that the horse is to follow you. So it's not that difficult to learn once you get the hang of it. So up on the D-pad to call your horse. Now, down on the D-pad is for your different uh, radar options. So if you want to expand the radar, that's how you do it. If you want to go back to regular, or if you just want to have a compass, you can also change it to a compass if you'd rather play that way. You can also go back to uh, expanded, regular, or if you just want to completely turn off the radar, you can do that as well by simply holding down on the D-pad. So we're going to turn the radar back on. Now, if we go back to left on the D-pad, there's several options in the interaction menu I want to go over. You have invites. So right now there's a wild kills challenge. That is a free roam event. We could do it, but we don't necessarily have to. It expires in just a few seconds from now. And that's where you're going to find all your invites, whether it's a posse invite, a free roam invite uh, invite to join somebody's posse or a session you always find it there the daily challenges are important because that's a good way to earn xp as well as gold and eventually they do multiply so as you can tell if you keep a streak going and all you have to do to keep a daily challenge streak going is by doing one daily challenge a day 
and then you go from 7 to 14 to 21 to 28 days. If you do it 28 days in a row, you will get a one-time treasure map. But post 28 days, as long as you keep the streak going for the daily challenges, you will keep the max gold reward multiplier. So as you can tell, I've already done a few daily challenges. I didn't do them all because some of them I don't really care to. And I would advise you do as many as you can do. Don't feel obligated to ever do all seven of them. You can if you want to, but there's usually going to be at least one or two that are going to come up that you really don't feel like doing. As long as you at least do one per day, it'll keep the daily challenge streak alive. So it's a great way to earn XP as well as gold in the game. Next is the posse system. So you'll start off with a regular posse, but you can also create your own persistent posse, which does cost a few bucks. So I would advise you just stick with the posse that you get your temporary posse. And eventually if you want to change it, you can do so, but you don't have to. The benefits are you can name the posse, you can change the size uh, from either small posse, which is up to four players, to large. And we can go ahead and uh, form the posse right now. So I'm going to go ahead and form the posse and form it. It's not that difficult to do. And from there, you can invite people to join your posse through the invite section for posse versus. You go in the posse versus, you'll see this appear on a regular basis in the daily challenge, whether it's for herb picking, posse races, today it's hunt the leader, and that's pretty much the uh, posse system. Now one thing you may wanna be mindful of, if you feel like it's you're having a difficult time adding new people to your posse, this all member section, you may want to kick people from it because eventually it will fill up, and if it's filled up, then no new people can join your posse. It's nothing personal, it's just a system that they have in place for this game. I'm not really excited about it, but it is what it is. So next is the camp. The camp is very important. This is uh, where you can do a lot of things. You can pick between a small camp or a large camp. And this, of course, dictates the size of your posse. If you have a temporary posse, you will only have a small camp op option. But if you have a large posse, the... Uh, permanent posse, you can toggle between small and large, which allows you to have up to seven persistent posse members. We're just going to go with small, and here you have the ability to decide which region you want your camp to be set at. Most of the time, the top option is where you happen to be. We're currently in the Gap Tooth region of New Austin, but if you're planning on going somewhere else, say for example the Bayou to hunt alligators, or Big Valley, or somewhere else, you can always predetermine where the camp's going to go if you're planning on using fast travel or you know go the long way around. So what we want right now is to just simply move it down here to the Gap Tooth region. Spend a few bucks on that, $2, and the camp has been pitched in Gap Tooth. And if we go by the radar, you can see the blip of the camp. You can also go to the map by hitting the pause button. And right there, all you got to do is hit a waypoint and that will lead you to your camp. So the camp is definitely very important. We're gonna go check out the camp in just a second. First off, back to the interaction menu. I wanna talk about stables. This is where you can uh, see your horses. I currently have only one horse, Galaxy Traveler, that takes many forms. And right now, it, it gives you the identification of the breed type, as well as the uh, gender of your horse. And so you see that all the different uh, quick stats. And for more information, we'll go into the stable in just a moment. So right now, the speciality, I can pick between which horse I wanna use for specific things in speciality, whether it's story mission, competitive, free roam, race, or you can just always make sure it's your best horse if you have more than one horse doing all of the above. If your horse gets killed, then either the nag will come out if you only had one horse, you can go back to the stable to reclaim your horse after it's been killed, or you can simply just have your secondary horse come out after your primary horse is killed through accident or by another player. That does tend to happen. The final thing I wanna go over in the interaction menu, once again, all you gotta do is press left on the D-pad is quick join. This is the quick way for you to join a variety of different modes and events going on in Reddit Online, whether it's the special series, uh, 
as well as showdowns, racing, if you just want to do some racing, or if you're interested in PvE, the land of opportunities, just uh, do a quick join, and it'll throw you into a random story mission. So it'll put you on call, and eventually you'll be able to play one of the missions in the land of opportunities. Next, let's go over the satchel, and you open your satchel by pressing right on the D-pad. Actually, you hold it down. And as you can tell, this is the recent stuff that I've used or added to my satchel. And of course, I have uh, the provision section. These are uh, meats that I've cooked. I've did a meats guides video if you want to check it out. And you have tonics, all the tonics I've collected. You can also purchase these items, but you can also loot them. And ingredients, these are a variety of herbs and plants that I have picked up along with uh, coffee materials that adds uh, to the satchel whenever you're out hunting or fishing you'll see the material section fill up uh, the kit this is all important items like the river lures as well as lake lures all your fishing lures your gun oil it tells you how much gun oil you have how much predator bait herb bait as well as a hair promenade uh, your camp so we'll be heading to camp very shortly and of course you also have a camera and you can also purchase a horse brush in your catalog in order to keep your horse clean. So a few things you can do with your horse is hold on left trigger and you can either brush your horse like I'm doing right now. And that's really good to maintain good hygiene. Plus it increases the bond between you and your horse. You can also feed your horse. You can either feed your horse here or you can simply jump up on your horse and then hold L1 and then use R1 to go over to horse and then select with L or L2 or R2 or right trigger left trigger depending on which controller you're using and then you can simply you know feed him or her and what I would recommend is go and find yourself some wild carrots if we come across wild carrots I will definitely show you what they look like but you always want to be out there hunting gathering fishing all which is good ways to make money in the game okay so here is some wild carrots we just happen to run across it so you always want to be on the lookout for these particular plants because this is a boon for anyone that wants to keep their horse happy their stand their health and you can carry a max of 10 wild carrots so anytime you see wild carrots be sure and pick these because those can be fed to the horse along with a lot of other items as well that you happen to collect loot and are harvest and gather so galloping is pretty easy to do. Once again, you should give a few hours to Red Dead Redemption 2. I would highly recommend you play the story mode. It's a fantastic game. And the game mechanics will most definitely help you if you're having trouble with Red Dead Online. So right now we're galloping over to the camp, following our waypoint. But you can also hold down either the select button on the Xbox. I think it's called the select button. I have an Xbox, but I forgot what specifically the button's called. Back in my day, it was called a select button. Or you can hold down the, uh, the touchpad, and it'll take you into cinematic mode. And all you really got to do with this is press, press the gallop button a few times, hold it down for a second, and then release it, and it'll set auto travel into play. Now, this is very convenient if you don't feel like fast traveling, if you just want to get up for a second, go get a drink or use the restroom and you're just going to be away from the game for like a minute or two and you need to get somewhere real quick or you just don't feel like doing it yourself, you can set the game to auto travel. You also learn this in most of these other skills in Red Dead Redemption 2. So we're quickly at the camp. Didn't take us too long to get here. The camp is very important. You always want to leave your white flag up. By the way, you see the tutorial bubble pop up on a, a frequent occasion in the top left-hand corner. Pay attention to that because it'll definitely help you with a lot of the mechanics in Red Dead Online. So that now that we're at the camp, the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the different camera angles, which you can you know toggle between with the select button or the touchpad. So it's very simple. Just every time you press it down, you can change it. You can also go in uh, first person. If you want to go back in the third person, just press it again. Quite simple. So if you want to access your catalog, by the way, anything you purchase from your catalog by holding left on the D-pad will either go to the camp lockbox or it will go to the nearest post office for you to collect, whether it's uh, ammunition or uh, tonics. For horses, I highly recommend 
You have some horse reviver. You definitely want to have horse reviver because anytime your horse gets hurt, you're going to want to have yourself some of this on you. So at least have two or three bottles on hand. And anytime your horse is hurt, just use it to revive your horse and then feed your horse and then your horse should be good as new. If not, your horse will probably die. And then you're either going to get your backup horse if you're lucky or you're going to get the nag. And then you're going to have to gallop all the way back to the stable. So, yes, it's definitely a good idea to have a little horse reviver on your character at all times. So the things you can do at the camp include uh, cooking and crafting. We went over cooking once again with the meats guide video. Feel free and check that out. You can also access the wardrobe section. Just go to your tent. By the way, there's different tent types. Uh, this is, uh, what, rank 64. And I recommend waiting till you're at rank 64 before you get uh, a tent because this is the best tent you can get core-wise. Maybe not look-wise. Okay, so there's... Uh, this is a big reason why I'm glad I have uh, defensive mode. And I'm also inside my camp, so they really can't do anything to me. As long as you have your white flag up, they can't really do shit to you. And it also helps to be in defensive mode. <laughs> so we're going to wardrobe, and wardrobe's pretty self-explanatory. You got your uh, spurs, your boots, your chaps, everything you buy. You'll see, you know, it as options. So if you want to, if you buy several coats, for example, you could find them all in your... Uh, wardrobe and by the way at every uh, grocery store or clothing store it also has a wardrobe section you can go to if you if you're not close to your camp so you can change your outfits up if you want and you can also modify certain aspects of your outfit by simply hitting modify right now I can't modify anything but that's a really cool thing about the game is that there's a bit of of tweaking you can do with some of your clothing items and to go to outfits you always have the custom outfit but you can always you know, make a new outfit. You can have up to three outfit slots. You can either add them to a horse or remove them for the, to the horse. You have the ability to have several outfits and you wanna have at least one outfit for hot weather and you wanna have one outfit for cold weather. So always make sure you have an outfit that suits the climate because the climate does play an effect, positive and negative depending on what type of clothing you happen to wear. So yes, this is the wardrobe section. You can also find your buckles here. As you play the game, you will earn buckles and you'll be able to uh, reset and prestige some of these buckles. We'll go over that in a little bit. But if you wanna know where your buckles are, this is where you find them in the wardrobe section. So I mentioned a moment ago that you purchase things through your uh, catalog or you can go buy them at the store but if you just if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't want to go to tumbleweed or you're nowhere near town and you just want to buy some ammo real quick you can always do it through the catalog and it will go to the lockbox which you can find at camp or to once again a post office so this is the lockbox and anytime you get a treasure map or any gifts from rockstar once again you can find those to collect along with bounties so if you have a bounty on you you can pay it off at the lockbox of your camp or, once again, at the post office. Very convenient indeed. There is a degree of customization you can do at the camp, most of which I would advise against, especially those of you starting off playing. You go to Wilderness Outfitters with Crips, and like I said, the tent itself, I would advise you waiting till you reach rank 64 when you're high enough to get the covered tent because the cores are at its best with this tent. Now there's different variations of the, of the camp. We'll go over that in just a second. But these I would recommend you saving some money on and not worry about purchasing any of these. Just wait till you can get the covered tent and just purchase that when the time comes. Just don't worry about it otherwise. Next is you can change your flag color if you feel so inclined. I think you automatically get the red one but if red's not your color, if you rather have purple or orange or green in my case, you can pay $50 for that. It's once again a luxury. It's not really necessary, but maybe later on in the game you're making some money and you just feel like having a different colored flag for your camp. Feel free and do so. You also have a variety of, uh, once again, oh yeah, the, the theme of the camp itself. There are currently five themes. I have two other themes, Survivor as well as Standard. But you can get the hobo life, military surplus, opulence. This is pu purely cosmetic. 
I would advise purchasing any of these unless one day you just have a ton of money and you just happen to like the look of Hubble Life, military surplus, traveling opulence, or any other camp look theme that they happen to add down the road. Just stick with standard for the time being. Next is the equipment. You really don't need this for a while. I have the access to purchase the fast travel post. We'll talk about fast travel in a minute. Now, eventually you rank up high enough to get the fast travel post. As you can tell, it would cost me $700, but I think I would much rather just go to a nearby town or location and just fast travel from there. You also have the option for a lot of items to purchase with gold instead. Some items in the game you can only purchase with gold, so there's definitely a dual currency system. Now, as far as uh, Crips' outfits are concerned, I advise you save your money and don't worry about Crips. He'll be all right. <laughs> He'll be just fine. So there are a variety of different activities you can do in this game, some of which you've already gone over, like uh, hunting, fishing, great ways to earn money in the game. Hunting is a good way to earn my, uh, XP as well. Uh, free roam, doing stranger missions, land of opportunity missions, the showdown series, races, free roam events, as well as gang hideouts, ambushes, dynamic events that randomly pop up in the game. So another thing I want to go over real quick is by the map. If you notice this dot here, this reddish dot, be on the lookout for red dots. The darker the red when it comes to another player, the more aggressive that player happens to be. So, yeah, you want to keep your distance from this type of player because they're usually the PvP types. They're looking for a fight. Blue dots usually won't cause you much trouble, but sometimes a blue dot can, you know, look for some trouble, whereas a red dot may just go on past you and never bother you. So sometimes it's interesting how the different blips in the game, even though it says that they're a potentially hostile player, it may not always be the case, but as the old saying goes, better safe than sorry. All right, so if you see that smoke cloud in the distance, that means that there's either a gang attack in the distance, which is usually identified by a red skull, or it could be a dynamic event. It's most likely a dynamic event. You have the option to do dynamic events. You don't have to. They're not necessary. But it is a good way to you know, fight some enemy NPCs, loot their bodies, uh, gain some XP and sometimes some money and gold as well. So we're going to travel back to Tumbleweed to the various stores. Now, not all the stores are found in Tumbleweed. Like, for example, there's only two doctors in the game, one in Ballantyne, one in Saint Denis. And I highly recommend you take most of the plants you gather, with a few exceptions, and sell them to the doctor because there's several ways you can make money in the game besides doing the showdown series, all the PvP modes, as well as free roam events, dynamic events, gang attacks, land of opportunity missions. Hunting is a great way to make money, and you make you earn the money in hunting by selling your stuff to the butcher. So you see a blue dot right there, which may or may not be friendly. Two blue dots. They're not very friendly to the NPCs, but killing NPCs will get you a wanted level and also raise your bounty. You don't want your bounty to go over $10, because that's when bounty hunters will come after you. But the butcher over there with the uh, cleaver as the icon is the guy you want to see in various towns to sell anything you've happened to hunt or kill, whether it's meat, uh, animal parts, fish, etc. So we're at the gunsmith, and we're going to first and foremost browse the catalog, and I'm going to tell you which weapons I recommend you start off with since this is a beginner's guide video. You obviously have two starter weapons, the Cattleman Revolver as well as the Carbine Repeater. I advise you not to upgrade either one of those. Now, the first weapon I think you should consider getting whenever you have the opportunity to do so, and you earn this in a lower rank, it costs more than zero dollars. <laughs> it's the Varmint Rifle. The Varmint Rifle for most people, unless you happen to get the Ultimate Edition of Red Dead Redemption 2, is going to cost you $72. So most of you are going to have to pay $72 more than I had to pay. But this is a fantastic gun for hunting small game like rodents as well as uh, birds. So small game animals and birds and rodents, you definitely want to hunt them with the varmint rifle. The next gun you should consider getting once you're high enough in rank is the bolt action rifle or eventually you can get the Springfield but you get the bolt action before you get the Springfield. So the bolt action 
is $216. You can use this for PvP against other players in the various PvP modes and for regular gunfighting and free roam. But it's also fantastic for hunting, which is predominantly what I use it for, on medium as well as big game animals. So this is a must for medium big game animal hunters out there in Red Dead Online. So at the very least, you definitely want to get your hands on the bolt action as well as the varmint rifle, which once again, for most players, is going to cost you $72, but it is a fantastic investment. Now, when it comes to cleaning your guns, you have two options. You can either clean your guns yourself by purchasing gun oil, or you can simply go to a gunsmith and have him clean it for you. We'll show that off in just a moment. But for those of you interested in learning how to eventually dual wield, whether it's uh, two pistols, two revolvers, or a different combination, you're going to want to get to rank 25, and then you'll be able to purchase the Horseman Holster. The, hol the Horseman Holster will allow you to dual wield, as you can tell. Before you get the Horseman Holster at rank 25, you're only going to be able to wield one revolver or one pistol or one short double barrel shotgun. So until you reach rank 25, you're only going to be able to single wield. But eventually you will be able to dual wield in the game. Now, depending on what you prefer, there's definitely a lot of uh, really good options early on in pistols. Well, first we'll go with revolvers. One of the newest revolvers to come out is the Lama, which is $317. I would recommend this gun because it can hold not only nine rounds of uh, ammo, it also has the ability to hold one shotgun round. So it's definitely a really good revolver if you're interested in an awesome revolver to eventually upgrade to once you get enough money and you're tired of the cattleman. Or if you prefer a pistol, you cannot go wrong with the tried and true Volcanic Pistol. Now, once again, the Volcanic Pistol was free for me because I had the uh, Ultimate Edition, but it's not too expensive. So I would advise you to either go with a pistol or a revolver eventually, but for a while, you'll be okay with uh, the Cattleman Revolver or the Carbine Repeater. You can use the Carbine Repeater early on for hunting, by the way. So some of you are probably worried about that. So until you're able to afford the varmint rifle and the bolt action rifle, my advice is just use the starter repeater, the carbine repeater. It's not the best gun. It's obviously at the very bottom, but you can use this for fighting NPCs. You can use it for hunting, big game or small game, even though you're most likely going to end up with only one star animals. You're not going to get paid as much, but it's better than nothing. So yeah, it's what you have when you begin the game. But eventually, when you can, get the Varmint Rifle as well as the Bolt Action. Now, for most of these weapons, you can have a variety of different components for it. Now, once again, I advise you not to upgrade your starter weapons. Do not waste money on the Carbine Repeater or the Cattleman Revolver. But whenever you do get a better revolver or a better pistol or a better repeater or a better rifle or shotgun, then you want to go into the section and improve those weapons in order to have maximum efficiency. So as you can tell, I haven't even bothered upgrading my carbine repeater. So you want to do on almost any other weapon, like improved rifling, as well as iron sights or scope. I don't really care for scopes on repeaters, but teach their own. I definitely like to have a scope on my bolt action because it serves as a sniper rifle. So you can also do stock as well as wrap. So these are components. Each one will obviously give you some benefit to purchasing. Now the stock is just, it's purely cosmetic. It just depends on what you look, what uh, wood finish you like the best for this particular gun, whatever gun it happens to be that you're upgrading or spending money on. The wrap is good for uh, deterioration. I don't really care for it though. I don't like the look. So, I mean, I, I guess it makes it to where you don't have to clean the gun as much. So that's, that's a good thing. Now, the different styles, this is purely cosmetic, and most of this costs gold anyways. But eventually, if you get a pistol or a revolver you really like, or even a repeater, and you just want to trick it out with a... And you got plenty of gold to do so, you know, it's your money. But you can also uh, change the different engravings on it, if you feel so inclined. Carvings, varnishes as well. But the other thing you can do and customize is you can check your ammo. So right now, for the repeaters... 
I have 194 rounds out of 200. So you always want to make sure you have plenty of ammo. So we'll go up here to my Lamar revolver. And it's perfectly fine. And like I said, if you don't feel like cleaning the gun yourself, you can always just go to the gun store. And it'll give you the option for him to clean it. It's the same price as gun oil, $1.50. So I definitely like that. So ammunition. I'm doing really good on ammunition for my Lamar revolver. We're going to go look at my volcanic pistol real quick. So once again, I don't have to clean this. The ammunition is uh, perfectly fine. 87 rounds out of 100. And then going down here to my Lancaster. Lancaster is also in good condition. And I'm pretty good on ammo on that one. And usually I have to clean my varmints as well as my bolt action. But at the moment, I don't have to clean my varmint rifle. And my ammo is pretty good on the, uh, the varmint rifle. So I got 60 out of 100 uh, rounds from the varmint rifle. And then finally, the uh, bolt action. We'll see how that is. So once again, my bolt action is in good condition. I got plenty of ammo for the bolt action and the shotgun. Shotguns are pretty good in PvP, especially up close and personal. Eventually, you'll get the pump action, and it's, it's definitely a good shotgun. So if you like shotguns, you'll get this eventually as you rank up in Red Dead Online. It's the same thing. You have different components. You can upgrade it. You can change the style if you want. Purely cosmetic for the most part. So, yeah. So, if you see that icon right by the jailhouse, that is a, a free roam mission. A stranger mission, actually. And that's something you can do uh, with a posse, with friends. Or you can do it by yourself if you feel so inclined. You'll see those scattered throughout the map in Red Dead Online. Another way to make money and earn XP in the game. And if you want to fast travel, which unfortunately does cost you money, you can go to a fast travel post. And, of course, you pick out where you want to go. The closer you are to a location, the cheaper it is. So the closest location I can fast travel to is Armadillo for $2. And I can also fast travel back to my camp if I want to. Uh, the furthest away is La Gras. That's $12. So this is definitely, if you don't really care for traveling or auto traveling around the map and you just want to get from point A to point B, then... I would recommend fast traveling but yes fast travel does cost a bit of money and uh, speak of traveling the best way to get around is of course your steed your horse your stallion your mare your trusted friend out on the open range and you should get very familiar with the stable so at the stable we could do a variety of things we can buy a new horse we can manage currently owned horses as you can tell i have four out of five horses. You can have up to currently four stalls. Unfortunately, each stall you buy is a little bit more expensive. So in order to buy a fifth stall, I'm gonna eventually have to spend $750. But I currently have four horses. And this one's my favorite, this Turkman right here. It's one of the best horses in the game, along with the uh, Foxtrotter, as well as the White and Black Arabians. Those are like the top tier horses as of right now. It takes a while to rank up before you can purchase those horses. So yes, you can tell by the stats, the, the cores, the condition that this horse is in. A really good uh, thing. Now there's something I want to warn you about. Don't ever accidentally discard your horse. Because unlike games like Grand Theft Auto Online, at least for now, you don't get any money back for any of your horses, even ones that you've purchased. Hopefully Rockstar will fix that issue. But at the moment, yeah, just be mindful when you're hovering over here. So you can see all the different horse types that I happen to have. So next is the TAC and Services. TAC and Services is where you can find the different saddle types. And currently I have the Nacogdoches. It's not the best saddle in the game, but it recently became available to purchase for like $500. And at the moment, it's definitely one of the best saddles that you can get before you reach rank 90s. So you can see that the core differences between my Nacogdoches and some of these others, you can definitely tell that the Nacogdoches is probably one of the best rank-free saddles to get your hands on. So eventually, you want to have this because of all the, uh, the cores, as you can tell. Once you get enough money and you get a decent horse, you definitely want to get the Nacogdoches saddle. You don't have to get it right away. You can just stick with your standard saddle. But this is something to aspire towards along with the uh, stirrups. Now, the same thing with the uh, different tents. I did not purchase any of these stirrups. 
I waited till I officially unlocked the best stirrup in the game, the hooded stirrup. That way, uh, the drain rate is at a negative 50%, which is definitely a good thing when you're riding around and galloping. So I would advise you save some money. Don't purchase any of these stirrups. Just wait till you're high enough rank to get the best stirrup in the game for your horse. So, And the rest of these things are purely cosmetic. Horns, blankets, bed rolls, all that is cosmetic. This is also where you come to change out your horses if you want to use another horse or if your horse got killed. You go to manage your horse and then you select the, the horse you prefer. Say, for example, uh, my Turkman got killed and then this horse got caught out and I wanted to go back to my Turkman, I would simply ride this horse back to the nearest stable and then I would come in here and I would pick it up. So I could, I could make this horse active and stable this horse. So I stable it and in order to make him active again so that I go out of the stable with the same horse that I want, I make it active. So now my Turkman is active. This is the horse that I will ride out of the stable with. Now when you're out looking for uh, plants or herbs together, whether to achieve a, a daily challenge or to make some money off of or you simply want some wild carrots. There are two ways you can go about finding the nearest uh, plants, either with uh, your eyes, like I'm doing right now, or you can press down on both joysticks at the same time, release them, and you can see that any plant nearby happens to kind of be glittering, a white glitter, and you can also see nearby wildlife in the distance or up close. So any wildlife, currently there's no other wildlife besides that horse over there. But you also see some trails in the distance of other animals traveling. But as you can tell with Eagle Eye, you can locate a variety of plants here and there. So Eagle Eye is very important to use when you're looking for plants or you're looking to track down a specific animal that happened to go by. And you can also use it for fishing. We haven't gotten into fishing because that's something that's not really a beginner's thing. Eventually you will get the fishing rod and once you rank up high enough to get the fishing rod, I highly recommend you buy a fishing rod and fish. It's a great way to make money in the game. And once you get a high enough in rank, I definitely think you should consider going to Le Gras all the way over here by Saint Denis and purchase the special spinner. You can only find the special spinner at Le Gras it costs a few gold, but it's totally worth it. It's way better than the other lures in the game. You get like standard uh, bait, like uh, cheese, bread, uh, cornbread you can use. I think you have infinite of that. So you can start off with that to catch smaller fish. You can also purchase worms as well as crickets through the nearest grocery store. But eventually you want to get the special spinner, which you can find only at Le Gras, And that allows you to catch fish almost anywhere. It's a very OP lure. Now, as you've noticed, I've accessed the map a few times to get an idea of where I am, what's nearby, different icons and locations. But if you want to quickly pull up the map, simply hold down on the start button and it will come up automatically instead of going through the menu. So as you can tell, Reddit Online is a relatively big map. So anytime you're looking for a stable, you know, horseshoe icon. You can find doctors, once again, in uh, two locations only to sell your plants and herbs to. And that's the doctor icon. This is the uh, store icon, the gunsmith icon, butcher icon, uh, the saloon, as well as the barber shop for uh, certain uh, facial cosmetics and different hairstyles, makeup for female characters, as well as uh, like beards, mustaches for male characters to find fences. There are a few fence options. You can sell any looted items that you happen to loot from, uh, well, jewelry, basically. Okay, so this icon is for fencing. So that's important to know. There's only a few fence locations throughout the map. See, this is a clothing store icon. Most of the time at uh, regular stores, you, they also serve as clothing stores, but there are tailors throughout the map as well you can find that specifically sell clothing items. This is uh, for poker, for anyone able to play poker in the game. And this is the uh, post office icon where you can uh, pay off bounties and or collect goods besides the camp lockbox. Since it's the uh, closest post office to where we happen to be, that's where we're going. All right, so here we are at one of the post offices throughout the game. Howdy there. Well and he's kind of salty. So you can come right here, go to the postal clerk, any deliveries you happen to have. If uh, they're grayed out, that means they're maxed out in your inventory, so you can't collect them. The post office will simply hold on to them. 
This is where you can find treasure maps. So whenever you rank up, say like at rank 10 or 15, every time you rank up by five, you'll get a brand new treasure map. And that this is where you will find your treasure map. You come here to the nearest post office or your camp lockbox, pick it up. While I currently don't have a treasure map on me, you can always find your treasure map once you pick it up in the letter, the document section. So you can find letters. This is where pamphlets go. So just go to treasure map. Imagine treasure map being right there. You open your treasure map by selecting it. And then it'll show you on the map where it happens to be. Then you travel to that location. You roam around the yellow dot, this big giant yellow dot. And then your controller will vibrate. If you're getting closer, if you're heading in the right direction, you can use eagle eye to also identify it. Once you get close enough, it'll look similar to the plants, but instead of white, it'll be appearing as gold in eagle eye. So I advise you to always go after treasure maps, whether you're looting enemy NPCs or you're collecting them by ranking up because they will definitely give you some gold as well as money and a few other items as well. While you're playing Red Dead Online, as I mentioned earlier, occasionally, every 45 minutes, you'll see a new free roam event pop up. And if you want to do the free roam event, once again, hit left on the D-pad, go to invites, and then select that as the free roam event you wish to do. So random ones pop up every now and then. It's another way to earn XP, make some money, earn some gold in the game. But speaking of gold, one thing you want to be on the lookout for, and I mentioned this earlier, is your buckles. Now, if you go to progress, the story mission is where you can go and replay any of the Land of Opportunity missions you have completed. So if you want to replay any of these Land of Opportunity missions, once you do them all, you'll be able to do them again and again. There is a cooldown period, but that's how you do it. You go to progress, then the story missions. For the awards, this is where you find all your buckles. Some of them you can reset. Some of them are one-time awards. For example, in hunting, I've earned a, a few. So I've, I've reached, uh, I think, the max on this one. I think 10 is the max. So I'm almost maxed out. But every time, uh, except for the last time, you reach uh, that goal. For example, right here, kill medium animals with a knife. I'm at 83 out of 100. Once I reach 100, then I'm able to reset it, and that will give me 40 nuggets of gold each time. So for the ones you can reset, you definitely want to reset those every chance you get because that's going to be more gold payouts. Plus, the awards also divvy out XP, which helps you rank up in the game. So as you can see, there's many different categories uh, for awards. All of them are different buckle types, depending on what kind of player you happen to be in Red Dead Online. So for the menu, it's pretty simple. You have the map. You can pull up the map, your abilities, the player, as well as go to story mode. This is what I usually do whenever I'm exiting online. I'll click on story mode, and then I'll go to exit game. And that's what I do. Or you could just simply go to online, back to the main menu. So this is how you find the main menu. We were here earlier at the very beginning of this long beginner's guide. I hope it's proved to be helpful for you. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out. And I tried to keep it to like beginner stuff, but I probably failed miserably. Uh, the store for microtransactions, the Rockstar Social Club, for anyone that happens to have the Rockstar Social Club linked up. So yeah, here's my Rockstar Social Club of uh, different uh, images and stuff. So yeah. Anyways, the final thing I want to talk about really quick before we wrap up is the settings. There's a, a few things you can do in settings. The one thing I would advise you to do if you don't want to hear in-game chat is go to settings, then go to audio, and then make sure voice chat enabled is off. That way you don't have to hear randos in the game, for better or worse. If you don't mind interacting and hearing randos, feel free and leave it on, but you don't have to. Now, one thing I was showed a while back is something actually really awesome for colorblind players in display. They have a colorblind mode. So if you're colorblind, good news for you, there is a degree of colorblind options in display for you to choose from. And for any other settings, you know, you got camera, you got general, audio, display. Settings is very good to help tweak the game uh, to specifications that might work out the best for you. In conclusion, there are three ways to 
earn money besides doing the missions or PvP modes, hunting or fishing. Hunting and fishing, you can always sell that to the butcher. So hunting, fishing, butcher will pay you for all that stuff. For any jewelry you happen to loot, you can sell that at the fence. And for any plants or herbs you would like to sell, you can sell those to the doctor. Once again, only two doctor locations, unfortunately. One in Valentine and one in San Denis. Some final thoughts. I would advise you to hold on to some of the plants. For example, Creeping Thyme as well as Wild Mint. And Ginseng. At least have a couple Ginseng on you because it helps if you ever get bitten by a snake. You can eat a Ginseng plant and it'll definitely help you with the snake poison. So these three are very vital when it comes to uh, cooking and seasoning meat and fish. Once again, I did a video about that already called The Meat Guides. If you feel free to watch that, you're more than welcome to. But most of the time, I would sell my sage, I would sell my snowdrops and any other plants I happen to collect to the doctor. And anything you cook, you can always find that in provisions. So for example, my cores are kind of low. You can see the, the hearts, the health core, the uh, lighting bolt is stamina, the eyeball is dead eye. So I want to definitely... Uh, eat that to get my cores back up. So there you go. Cooking definitely is something you want to do in this game. Plus, it's considerably cheaper than buying provisions from your catalog or the store. So hunt, fish, cook things, uh, collect things, loot bodies, loot houses. And it'll definitely save you some money in Red Dead Online. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to first off thank you for taking the time to get to this point in my beginner's guide video. I hope that it proved helpful. I do apologize if I rambled a little bit. I did my best. I was on the fence for a while about whether or not I wanted to do an online beginner's guide video. And thank you so much to everybody that's part of my community on my channel for supporting me over the past few days, encouraging me to do it. You guys are freaking awesome. So I wanted to give you all a uh, shout out real quick. Let you all know that I appreciate each and every one of you, whether you left a comment or you were one of the ones that left a like or one of the ones that's going to promote this video. And hopefully those of you that did watch it found at least one or two things that may help you when it comes to Reddit Online. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if there's anything I missed out that you think that a new player in Reddit Online should know, feel free and leave it below in the comment section.